My name is Tim Abel. My regular office is a soundstage or a movie set. And I just passed through and I figured, what the hell, why not give it a shot? And now, I'm searching for something new, something genuine, as I venture into the world of the hunter. Right, okay. I'll be traveling a long way from Hollywood, searching through the experiences of a wide variety of hunts. It's a journey that was worth every mile. I live and work as an actor in the concrete jungle, but I am alive when I am hunting. My name is Tim Abel, and I'm on a mission. I'm going to hunt with the most seasoned hunters in the world. So come along with me and learn from the best, and you too can become the ultimate hunter. My uh, memories of hunting as a kid were with my uncle, and uh, we used to hunt in Virginia. And those areas are very wooded, uh, very thick, a lot of hardwoods. Now, coming out here to South Dakota, it's just open expanses, and you've got this ground, and it just it goes on forever. It's, it's beautiful. A lot of these deer get really big just for the fact that, um, you know, they can see you coming from a long ways away, and they've got their escape routes figured out. Right. So, you got to be pretty selective on how you hunt the area. The way I hunted, I, you know, I'm pretty aggressive. I like to get right. out there and, and, and try to find them deer. That's probably what we're going to end up having to do. So. Aggressive is good. Absolutely. Things are going to happen pretty fast now, Tim. So once we get up on this hill, those deer could bust out on us. They're going to be holding pretty tight. The mm. weather, I mean, it's hot today. So we're probably going to have to work for them to get them up and okay. moving. So we'll get up on this hillside and see what we can do. All right. Good deal. Okay. I was just a little bit concerned about taking long shots and uh, you know being proficient with that because I haven't done it in so many years. The last thing you want to do as a hunter and as especially being a former military guy is uh, to miss your shots. A couple more white tails there. Right there, that's a that's a doe with her fawn. Right. She needs to kick that fawn off there before she's going to be ready for for uh, breeding. So the the bucks are. Pretty much not going to be pursuing deer with barns right now. It's kind of amazing. We just come up over that hill and <laughs> they're, they're sitting there watching us. So. That was exciting. Let's go down here and check this point. We came in there and glassing these fields. Spotting and stalking these animals becomes predominantly the way that you're going to find these big bucks. Right back in here, there's just, it looks like two or three doe. I can't really tell. They're back in the trees and they're kind of just slowly grazing through to the right. Those does being down there, there's probably going to be a buck with them. So I think if we just kind of move, you know, with them on the side, they're, they're going to expose themselves. So. Okay. We just saw them and then we decided to create a strategy of how to get there. Let's kind of hustle up a little bit get around this bend so if they come out in the open we can see them. So we'll move around this and then cut up over that hill? Yeah, side? yeah, let's do that. Let's go. That's what. Right there, right there. Big buck, big buck. Get up, get up, get up. Wait for him to stop now. He's a good solid four. Not really wide. Right there, he's not stopping. Okay. Yeah, he's not going to stop. I lost him. Okay, he went down to that creek. Yep, that's all right. To the right. So let's move on up the hill here quick. Hustle up ahead of him and uh, just wait for him to come down the draw. We just ran pretty much all the way to our position. Okay, let's go. Right here, right here, right here. Right here, right here, set up right here. He put me down in a place. He moved to the opposite side to glass from the other side. So we stood on high ground and waited for the deer to move into the right position to take the shot.
first shot. I think I overestimated how how far he was, the distance. This prairie, it's hard for me to make a good estimate here. I think I shot over his back. Pretty sure I redeemed myself in that second shot. I'm gonna wait for Pat to come back over. Then maybe we can move down in that draw and see if we can find him. Whew. Man, my heart is beating. Whew. Well, I was just kind of waiting for Pat. Pat got back and Pat went over and uh, asked me about uh, about that first shot, what the heck happened on that? It's just down over here, right by that big thicket where that okay. broken tree is. And then um, he sees these uh, horns sticking up out of the grass. There he is right there. Good <laughs> job, buddy. Looking down there and just seeing those horn tips sticking up out of that wheat colored grass it took me right back to being with my uncle hunting back in uh, Virginia. Well, we knew he was down. Let's check him out here. All right. Yep. Good job. The width on this deer is great. I mean, it's incredible. Out past his ears on both sides. Look at the size, the width on that deer. Man, that is just nice. beautiful, beautiful white tail. That's a, that's a great deer. Nobody would pass on that deer. That's awesome. I tell you what, that feeling of going down there, getting down that hill and recovering him, it was just, uh, yeah, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. So what did I learn on my return to whitetail hunting? That the writers are wrong. You can go home again. This is the start of something, a beginning that is both new and ancient. I'm approaching hunting for my own reasons, but I understand that I'm reconnecting with what has always been there inside me. I still have some distance to go, but I'm looking forward to the trip, and I hope you are too.